I go. I go. Good morning, good morning. Hope we all had a good night's sleep. Louder. Hope we all had a good night's sleep. Wonderful. Okay, great. Today, our itinerary takes us to the Cape Coast Castle, um, which used to be the seat of government. Originally started by the Danes and then turned into a castle by the British in 1667. Cape Coast is the corrupted version of Ogwa. The original name for Cape Coast is Ogwa. When the Portuguese first landed or stayed in Cape Coast, they named the place Capocoso, meaning short Cape. The British took over, they could not pronounce or don't want to call it Capocoso, so they call it Cape Coast. Now the original name for Cape Coast is Ogwa, founded by Fetu Magnet, uh, hailing from Efutu, that is a town about 20 kilometers north of Cape Coast. And they migrated from there to settle in the present day Cape Coast, known as the Fetu Magnet. So it's a Fetu uh, town, or a Futu town. Futu, that is the original place where the people migrated from to settle in Cape Coast. The emblem of Cape Coast, the emblem of Cape Coast, or their their emblem is the crab. It is believed that the founder loved eating the crab, and these crabs were just down the hill, or a marshy area, just down the hill where the uh, Cape Coast Hills, and they named it Kotokraba. So we have the Kotokraba market. It is not because they, uh, there are a lot of crab in that area. So it's a revolt for crabs. So yes, so Kotokraba simply means where is and the market, the largest market in the Cape Coast area is the Kotokraba market. The Almi, the Cape Coast Castle, stood as the seat of government when the British actually took over. A treaty was signed between the British and the Dutch, known as the Anglo Dutch Treaty in 1867 where they share the forts and castle among themselves. The British took the east side while the Dutch took the west side. So this morning, we are going to go into the dungeons to see where millions of Africans were taken during the transatlantic slave trade. Ghana alone has over 40 to 45 forts and castles dotted along the coast. Most of those forts and castles, some of them are in ruins now that you cannot see. So beginning from Keta all the way to Axim in the west, you'll find forts and castles. The hell, so apart from Ghana, you also find Fort and Castle in Benin and in Senegal. But all this, the majority are located along the shores of Ghana. The Cape Coast Castle is the second largest outside the Elmina Castle and built in 16 or turned into a castle by the British in 1667. So we are going to look at or tour those dungeons where the Africans captives were kept until they were taken out from the Almina and Cape Coast castles. Now with the Cape Coast castle, you will see the door of return. 
you will see the door of return because you pass through the door of no return and you pass through the door of return. The door of return because Ghana celebrates the Emancipation Day and the first Emancipation Day celebration, two remains were brought from the diaspora, that's from New York and Jamaica. And they were brought in just like the way they were taken out and therefore we have the door of return and they were taken through that door back into the Cape Coast Castle and then transported to Asan Manso, north of Cape Coast, where they were reinterred by the river known as Don Konsu or the Slave River. And they were reinterred. There. So when we get there, you will see the remains of the two buried in the ancestral law. Well, we are now in Cape Coast, the former capital of the Gold Coast, which was moved from here in 1877 to Accra. There are two reasons why uh, the, uh, the capital was moved from here to Accra. It is said that the third one, the people say that, I'll give you the third one before I give the, the other two reasons. The third one, the people have the view that they forced the British to move from here to relocate to Accra because one of the women had a problem with one of the British police officers and when they came to arrest, the people fought against and then they prevented it and, the, and they decided that well, the people are becoming hostile to us and therefore let's move out. The other reasons is that they said the topography of the ground was not conducive for their games like polo and others, so they decided to move. The other reason is that they realized that the colony was becoming big and therefore they need a place that they can access other areas on time or quickly and therefore they decide to move from here and resettle in Accra. So the, it is the former capital but presently it is also the regional capital for the central region. So when decisions are taken by the central government in Accra, it comes down to uh, the regional uh, capital, to the regional uh, capital, and then it's disseminated through the districts, and then it goes on and on. So the people of Cape Coast are Fantis. They are Fantis and they speak the Fanti language. The major economic activity for the people of Cape Coast is fishing. That is a traditional economic activity, but it also prides itself in trade. It was the trade in salt and other uh, merchants that attracted the British and the others to come in here and settle. Like I said before, the Portuguese were the first Europeans to have landed on the coast of Ghana in Elmina. Then others followed the Danes, the Swedish, the French, and others. And it was left with only the British and the Dutch. The Dutch finally sold their interests and by the treaty they signed and sold their interests to the British and the British took over. And it will interest you that Kwame Nkrumah chose the 6th of March 1957 as Ghana's independent because it was exactly on the 5th of March 1867 that the Dutch and the British signed that agreement. And therefore, it was exactly a century when the British colonized the country and therefore, Kwame Nkrumah decided to use the system match. So it is not coincidence that Kwame Nkrumah was on the spot to do what is. Gradually, we are entering Cape Coast Township. And most of the houses here are over a century old. And the people of Cape Coast or the central region, like I said, most of them have lost their original surnames having European or Dutch names. So you might see Wilson Johnson is from Cape Coast.
you must see all those European names are in the Cape Coast area, Almina area, and the Western region, and some parts of Accra, like Jamestown. So as the people have lost their original surname, so are their towns. So Cape Coast is supposed to be called Ogwa. Ogwa. And that is why they celebrate Ogwa Fetu Afashe. Education started from Cape Coast, and Cape Coast has a lot of what we call grade A schools, like St. Augustine's, Infantipim, and Infantipim produce our able a lot of leaders, like Kofi Annan, a lot of the pass through the Infantipim school. And then we have Fantipim, we have St. Augustus, we have Agri Memorial, we have most of schools, and Kwame Nkrumah's own school is the Ghana National College. And that is Kwame Nkrumah's own school because Kwame Nkrumah founded that school when the missionary schools wanted to get rid of people who were not willing to uh, succumb to uh, prayer and all that. They were moved out and Kwame Kumaya that and asked for a land from the chief and then put up the school with few students at that time. And it's also one of the best senior high schools in the country. So if somebody tell you that it's just coincidence, Dr. Kwame Kuma chose the name Ghana. No, he had the name Ghana long ago in his mind. That you take a cue from the Ghana National College. That is the palace to my right. And to your left, that's the palace of the Omahini of the Ogwa traditional area. And very soon will be at the Cape Coast Castle or Cape Coast Dungeon. which served as a seat of government for the British colony and later moved to Accra and they placed the seat at the Christian Borg Castle in Accra. So you are welcome to Cape Coast Dungeon or Cape Coast Castle as we call it. Directly opposite the castle is the first presidential library for the late president, Dr. Sorry, for the late president, Professor John Evans Atamels, which is supposed to be controlled by or uh, under the auspices of the University of Cape Coast. But unfortunately, it's not fully operational. That is another day. Thank you, and you're all welcome, Akwaba, to Cape Coast Castle. We're going there and we are going to see the agony of our people, what they went through. And the Cape Coast Castle also has a museum which is crossroad of people or the West Africa Historical Museum is sited in the Cape Coast Castle. It also has a 45 minute video which shows crossroad of trade, crossroad of people. So you are all welcome to the Cape Coast Dungeons. Let's go.